Hello and welcome. In this video I'll share 5 different tips that can help you have a better experience with Odini. So I'll start with some UVs, here's how I UV these assets. I start with a clip to slice it in the middle, and as I need a seam in one side I can use the group by normals to filter one of the sides. Clipping the top and bottom, and I also been saving the clipped edges group in the clip node. Then I can simply UV flatten, feeding the group we saved. Now you might not want those cuts in there, so you can use the Labs UV transfer to copy the UVs to the original mesh. So how would you go about parenting objects like the look depth reference to a camera? I actually learned part of it from another YouTube video that I will link in the description. But you start with a primitive that I will name it as null. Then create a transform to rotate 360 degrees on the Y axis. To make a perfect loop I can divide the frame by the final frame multiplied by 360. Next add a camera and set your framing. Now I add the look dev objects and place them manually on the bottom left corner of my frame. And finally add the graft stages, loading the objects to parent in the second input. Oh, and make sure your camera primitive pad is under the null, and also make sure that you're transforming the null. So now we're going to see how to transform opacity based foliage to mesh, so we can render it with the pad tracer without taking ages. We start by tracing the opacity map, Remesh it since we need to deform it. Create a connectivity to identify each part and reverse it. And now copy the UV to the position as we need the atlas in the same position of the UVs. After the original mesh, place a for each connected piece. The other for each begin node is set to fetch input loading the atlas. Now, in this wrangle I am sampling the class attribute from the atlas after finding the correct match using the uvdist function. Keeping only the match by using the sample class saved from the wrangle. And finally uv sample the position from the original mesh part. This is similar to a YouTube video that I will link in the description. And running the loop everything seems to be working fine, compiling it, it will be even faster. The advantage of this workflow is that we can render much faster in Karma, that takes ages to sample opacity maps. So I was working on a texture projector tool that never finished, but that I would like to share a tip I learned. So the way this works is by placing a point on the geo and it copies a plane to it. But then I would like to have the ability to have the rotate pivot oriented correctly so I can rotate the plane or in the end the texture. And for that I am using a transform node with the rotate pivot set to a custom attribute. And that attribute was created in VEX by using the make transform function using the n and app original attributes. Then just make sure we convert it to Euler angles and I'll put the attribute in degrees to fit the transform rotate pivot. So in this final tip, which is a 2-in-1, I want to talk about rest position and time dependencies in Solaris. As you can see I have this simple animation and the triplanar texture is sticking to the sphere. And that's because I have connected the rest position attribute to the position input, otherwise it would slide as you can see. And finally, see how enabling and disabling the cache node in here changes our playback speed. This is because we're removing any time dependencies on the stage. You can do the same with transform and other nodes in Solaris, this will drastically increase your performance working in this context. So I hope you have learned something new. And don't forget to check out my Patreon, where I have hours of premium tutorials and courses. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time!